Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the seventh week of the weekly weight loss Zoom. Nice to see so many people on tonight. Why do we have the Zoom? Well, to be a support group because a lot of people need support and people just want to belong somewhere and have friends and it helps them to stay committed. We also want to share dieting tips. People want to talk about things. If you have something to add at the end, please share with us. Get health and nutrition tips in the process. Give me your questions. If you've got any questions, then I try to answer them. If you something that's more um, complete, you need something more, then we'd rather incorporate the next week's Zoom and have some fun doing it. I suppose this is one way of exercising. I made my dog five miles, so I can tell people I walk five miles every day. Now, I don't think that's the exercise we must get. I don't think that's the idea. Join also a weight loss support group on Facebook and on WhatsApp. So you see that you can join us there. If you can't remember the details, you can also contact me and we can get you on. So weekly tip. I'll be check what you eat and drink. That's quite obvious, but we tend to forget that sometimes. What's your portion size? Uh, I'm something guilty of that one. Learn to read labels because there's things on labels that actually show you they are harmful or fattening. So be careful of what's inside the products you eat. Do your homework. Also choose foods high in fiber and carbs. <coughs> and then also try train your brain. That's what we're going to talk about tonight as well. Train your brain. If you want to lose weight, know your GI and your GL. Well, what is that? That is one of the questions that Linda asked me to talk about. And then also learn some tricks to fool your mind. Because we can't actually eat less. Now, what is GI and what is GL? GI is glycemic index. You very often buy bread, it says low GI. Okay? Glycemic index assigns a numeric score to food. Okay, and the food the score is then based on how drastic it makes your blood sugar rise. Certain so foods that you eat, very quickly, your blood sugar will increase. And that's what the GI is for. Okay? Low GI, your blood sugar won't rise very quickly. And we need food that's low GI. Remember we spoke about the insulin trap in the, uh, in the previous Zoom? Because if your blood sugar rises quickly, your insulin level will also rise quickly. And that can lead to damage and fat storage. And glycemic index doesn't tell the, uh, everything. It's not everything you need to know. You need a more complete picture, and that's where your glycemic load comes in. For example, a watermelon is high GI. 80 out of 100, that's the value, high GI. But a serving of watermelon has so little carbohydrate that its glycemic load is only five. So we must compare the two. Glycemic load is how much carbs actually, or how much sugar actually gets into your body. So we have to look at the two. In one case, it says sugar is quickly released. In the other case, it says how much sugar will be released. So that's the difference between the two. So let's talk about glycemic index. What is it? It measures carbohydrate quality. For example, how much carbohydrate will affect blood sugar, how it will affect your blood sugar. It is ranked from 0 to 100. And then it says if the value is 55 or less, it's considered low GI. If you consider between 56 and 69, then it's medium. And high is 70 or more. So we must try to go for the low GI. Those that won't spike your sugar very quickly. Now, carbohydrates with low GI values are more slowly digested as well. And it's slowly absorbed and metabolized. And this, the sugar in your blood will shoot up very quickly. And therefore, the body will also um, use less insulin. And that's what we must aim for. How can we use low glycemic uh, index or the concept of diabetics? Try to avoid peaks in the blood sugar levels because that is a problem. Because peaks in blood sugar levels lead to inflammation, which causes damage to blood vessels. And also, if your insulin then spikes, what happens now is the body will take the excess glucose and turn it into fat. 
which is what you don't want. Okay, so we must try and achieve this by taking low GI foods, eating low GI foods. Oh, so try and include at least one low GI carbide food at each meal and snack that you have. Weight control, those who are trying to shed a few kilos want to manage their appetite, it's still, it's still be satisfying. So low GI foods help keep you full for longer. And so stay off hunger pangs, meaning you'll eat less. It will be easy to eat less then. Okay, sportsmen, obviously they need for endurance low GI foods. And that's why you find it in many products they use. I suppose if you've got people that like 100 meter sprint, they need a faster uh, release of glucose. Okay. For slow digestion, we should look to low GI foods such as whole wheat pasta. Interesting enough, pasta is a, a low GI, depending on the type of pasta, the whole wheat pasta, for example. Muesli, porridge oats, Apples, grapefruit, blueberries, bulbs, and oranges, milk, yogurt, bread with whole intact grains, meat, different types of meat. They actually got no GI value because they don't normally contain sugar and they digest slowly as well. Good fats, they also take the longest to digest of all the foods. And you get your vegetables and your legumes also. Now, some of these things might not be good for diabetics, but in general, these are things considered low GI foods. High GI foods include your white bread, your white rice, breakfast cereal, cereal bars, cakes, cookies, sweet treats, all this nice stuff people like to eat. Today. Your high GI food, such as watermelon, although there's a low glycemic load. Dried foods such as dates, raisins, and cranberries, potatoes and fries, crisps and rice crackers, and sweetened dairy products such as fruit yogurts. So uh, you can think about including your medium GI food also in your diet, but less frequently, obviously. According to a study in 2007, the following factors affect the GI. Now, firstly, what macronutrients are in there, which means like proteins and fats, and your fiber, those things, what else is in there? That's next with fiber. How much fiber is in there? The types of sugar and starches. Is it a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, is it a polysaccharide, things like that. Uh, the ripeness and maturity of the food, for example, banana, a green banana is got less sugar than a very ripe banana. The processing, the preparation, cooking methods play a role, the physical form of the food, and then anti-nutrients. We know that certain nutrients, a uh, little example, vitamin C helps absorption of iron. But there are certain foods that do the opposite. They can actually prevent or block the absorption of certain nutrients from the body. Of course, be careful about that because you might lack nutrients in a case like that. Now, calcium must not be taken with other minerals, for example, if you take a calcium supplement, except the magnesium and the vitamin D. But it depends also on the type of supplement. I know like the New Life um, CalMac with vitamin D, uh, the way it's, it's put together, Manufactured, you can actually take it with food as well. And the calcium will still be very well absorbed. Now, glycemic load. Now, we know obviously the effect of carbon in the food or blood sugar level is not the only thing we look at, um, but we look at the quality, but the amount of carbon in particular food. Uh, so we have to look a broader picture, not only the carbohydrate uh, in there. Glycemic load is the term used to describe the overall effect. Okay. Others, like we said before, there is sugar in there, but how fast will the sugar be released, but also how much will be released, but how much part. Here's an example. Glycemic load of potato, take note, glycemic index is about 90, but if it is about 18 grams of carbohydrates in there, that means your glycemic load is 16. If you get an apple, make the same sum, glycemic index, which is 40, um, multiplied by the 15 grams of carbohydrates, you get six. So six is a low value, which is what you want, low value. 
So we can see the potato will produce a blood sugar rise three times that of the apple. If we use a similar amounts of carbohydrate, glycemic index will have the greatest influence on blood sugars. With the amount of carbohydrate in the portion differs, the best way to predict would be your glycemic load. You see this example, the potato and the apple has got almost the same amount of carbohydrates, but your apple has got a much lower glycemic load. Another example, glycemic index of water billion is high. Uh, some sources say 72, some says it's 90, but that, that's not the point for now. The glycemic load ever is loaded only seven because the quantity of carbohydrate in a slice of water billion is minimal because it contains a lot of water to take the complete picture now. So the similar concepts, like we said before, some nutritionists use the following cutoff figures for foods. Uh, glycemic load, less than 10, is considered low. So those are things we must think about eating because that, that will prevent the sugar spikes, will prevent the insulin spikes, will prevent the fat formation, in other words. Medium is 11 to 19 points and high is over 20. So but try to keep your GL, glycemic load, less than 100. So there are different diets and different opinions as well. So it's best for you to try it for yourself and see how it works for you. But like I said, there are always different opinions depending on who you talk to. Okay. Now, according to what, what I've seen, uh, there was a question about is oats considered low GI? If we go back on the slides very quickly. You will see in the one example here, it said the porridge oats. I suppose that would be your real uh, old time oats, not these quick oats and stuff like that. That's considered as a low GI food. Okay, different of opinions. The point is, was pay attention to what you eat. Not too much carbs. And also, it mustn't spike your blood sugar. But then the, the American Diabetes Association, on the other hand, says that the total amount of carbs in the food, rather than its specific index or load, is what you must look at. So different opinion. That's what it's best to do. Try it for yourself and see when it works for you. So don't focus too much on glycemic index and glycemic load either. Some nutritionists and dietitians feel it makes us too complex. So the good idea is go back to your Banking green list as a good example to a, a food that you can eat. Bottom line, if I, yes. If I may, if I may, Herman. Yes, um, the, the reason why I asked this question is because there are so many products on the morning on the market that always say low GI, low GI, and it's suitable for diabetics. I okay. understand that I understand the difference between a spike in blood sugar and raising blood sugar. So the one dietitian or nutritionist that, that I had an argument with, she kept telling me, for example, and I won't mention her name because she's a very well-known dietitian and, or nutritionist in Johannesburg and charges something like 2,000 rand an hour for a session. Sure. But she was telling me that, for example, sushi rice is low GI because it's cold rice and the starch in the rice will not spike your blood sugar as quickly as normal tested, white tested rice would. I said, I understand the difference between spike and raising blood sugar. Okay. So as, as an example, I was so adamant to prove her wrong for me and my body and what she was advising me to eat was totally wrong. Um, I went across the road to Woolies. It was in a morning appointment. I went across the road to Woolworths and I bought a small packet of four little what do you call those California roll sushi things, which is just salmon and I think a little bit of mayonnaise and the white sushi rice. And when I got back to her rooms, I tested my blood sugar in front of her and it was 6.2, I think it was. Two hours later, I sat there for two hours in her waiting room just to prove a point to her. Two hours later, my blood sugar was 29.5. Yeah. And that's all I had eaten. 
was no. those four little sushi rolls. So I, I have a problem with nutritionists and diet, dietitians who tell us to eat a low glycemic. Your, your blood sugar is going to raise anyway, whether it's going to spike within 30 minutes or 15 minutes, or it's going to raise over a two hour period, you're still going to have high blood sugar. That's a so, that's problem, yes. So th that's my argument. Why, why do people say a low glycemic index is a suitable diet for diabetics when it's not because you're still going to have a high blood sugar it's not going to spike but you will still have high blood sugar but that's where glycemic that's load comes in in the end because it might it might go slowly up but it still goes up in the end it's still going to go up exactly yeah. and the other problem i have is that packaging gives you the gi it doesn't give you the gl exactly yeah, yeah. So, you know, how are you supposed to measure? So I, I just, but like I said, that is my body. And I'm terrible, I'm, I mean, I have a non-functioning pancreas anymore. So I understand how my body works, but, and, and I fight for, for the knowledge that I need for my body. I, I just feel extremely passionate for those people out there who don't understand these things. And because a dietitian will say, well, eat sushi rice because it's cold and this, I don't know, there's a word for the starch when it goes cold, it gets cooked and then it gets cold. I don't know, I can't remember the name for it. It reduces the carb value. It's still high. It'll still spike your blood sugar. It will not necessarily spike, but it'll still push your blood sugar up. Because there's Those still a the load. There's still a exactly, load. Exactly. Yeah. So, but thank you for that information. It makes sense now. And I now know that I will never, ever touch anything with a glycemic label on it because it doesn't work in my case at all and it goes back to what i said go to the bank list um, yeah it's a better exactly. guide actually exactly exactly okay so the bottom line obviously is fine but it works for you but be careful even your glycemic low glycemic load ones can in the end give a lot of sugar that's the yeah. bottom line it might give yeah. it slower but it still it can still give it Exactly. Okay. So reaching a stake at a healthy weight is more important for your blood sugar and your overall health. So uh, uh, like we said before, we don't want the insulin to spike because if that happens, you, it produces fat from the excess carbs in your body, which is what, when you lose weight, you don't want that. Now, is it a duck or is it a rabbit? What do you see? It's a dark Herman. <laughs> I see both. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, just look at the angle and look at what you focus on. I know. I'm focusing on the beak, but you focusing on the ears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you look at the right hand side, you, it, it looks more like a nose of the rabbit again. Yeah. Look at the right hand side, and you see it looks more, more like the nose of a rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. It's both. That, both. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You see, that is the problem. Our brain can be fooled. Okay, we, we um, and what I'm going to go into now is something we can do to train our brain or fool our brain, uh, so we can eat less. For example, now some of these tips, some might work for you, some might not work for you. I use different sources, uh, different opinions, but okay, fool your brain or train your brain and see if you can eat less because it, it obviously is to do with what you eat as well but also quantity both factors play a role when it comes to weight loss because even if you eat only good food and eat a lot you will gain weight here are some tips make at least half your plate veggies because veggies add volume to your meal and let you eat fewer calories in the process for the same amount of food uh, I'm, I'm guilty that I like the sweet veggies more than the salty ones. So uh, in my case, that might not be always that good an idea, depending on which ones I put in my plate. How then protein helps your body feel fuller and carbs do. So include protein with each meal and snack to boost. Okay. Using smaller plates. I mean, if you have got these massive plates, our eyes get full. We want to fill our plate. Use a smaller plate. Which can help you check your portion sizes. It takes your brain into thinking you're eating a lot. Limit distractions and being mentally present while you eat. Okay, people sit in front of the TV and they eat and they eat and they eat watching TV. Uh, 
and that way they can actually eat more than they really need to eat. Adding hot pepper or ginger to your meal may help you feel fuller and eat less. That fragrance is also a taste, the buds and stuff like that, the peppers, spicy food can also make you eat less. There's actually a research study that showed that it has an effect on your brain. Soluble fiber helps keep hungry at bay, hunger at bay. Now, like, like an oatmeal or something, you might find it there, and squash and beans and apples and pears, different foods you would find, but soluble fiber. But also, eat an apple before shopping. Hungry shopping causes people to fill the trolleys, very much in more high calorie kilojoule foods. They always say, don't go shop when you're hungry. Same here. Also, think yourself as a healthy eater. Tell yourself a couple of times that I'm a healthy eater. I'm a healthy person. I'm health conscious. Train your brain. Set up a food diary, Instagram account, or post new pics or something. Okay, so you can keep track of what you're eating. Because I know some people say, but I haven't eaten anything today. But the moment you start asking them, and they start adding all the snacks they've eaten, they've actually eaten two, three full plates of food in the air. Interesting one, snacker walnuts. It activates a brain region involved in appetite control. Here's one, eat with the other hand, or eat with chopsticks if you're not used to eating with chopsticks. Because you have to concentrate more on your food and what you eat. And you also end up eating less. Spend a bit of time imagining yourself eating the snack. Just imagine it. I, I, I don't think this will work for me because it might make me just do it and eat more. But they say for some reason, it make you already think you're eating it and then you end up eating less of it. Okay, set your phone time to 30 seconds. Now, there's another one. Um, and when you feel hungry, for 30 seconds, you tap your finger on your forehead. For 30 seconds, tap. Tap, tap, tap on the forehead, 30 seconds. Apparently that distracts the brain and you won't feel hungry anymore. Or clench your muscles, make a fist, the clencher, for example, when you're tempted to snack. Another one is your brain. Cut your food into small pieces. Because if you have multiple pieces, like you're not supposed to eat pizza, I suppose, when you diet, but if you have a pizza, cut it into small bits and pieces. Instead of one or two big pieces. It tricks your brain into thinking that you consume more. We can be fooled. Another interesting one. Make sure your plate is blue and your surrounding is blue. Because the color blue summer suppresses your appetite. Position yourself opposite the mirror so you see how you eat and what you eat. And another one, turn up lights and turn off music. Many restaurants that you go to, the lights are not very bright. And there's music, because that stimulates your appetite. If you turn up the lights and turn down the music, turn off the music, it doesn't affect your appetite in the sense that you want to eat more. When the urge to snack becomes too great, grab a neutral sweet food such as bananas or apples, okay? Not a rat a bananas with a lot of sugar in, okay? Eat slower, chew more, enjoy your meal. Don't Eat like a Rottweiler, you know, five a minute, a few seconds is gone. Remind yourself not to eat too much. Interesting one here. Yeah. Old trick used by women in France was to tie a ribbon around their stomachs before going out. So this helped them to stay away of their tummies. So when, you, when the ribbon starts to get tight around the tummy, they oh, I've eaten too much. So as men, we have a belt sometimes, and belt around the tummy sometimes get tight. Eh? They eat too much. Train your brain. Talk to yourself, okay? Talk to yourself, I'm not hungry, that type of thing. Or I had enough to eat. Or drink a fiber tablet, tablet like a Mueller fiber tablet. Drink three of these tablets, for example, about 25 minutes before a meal with a glass of water. There are other health benefits to drinking these fiber tablets, but this is one example. Uh, because these Mueller fiber tablets, they swell up and they make you feel full as well. They absorb the water and the sweller. Okay, those were some tips. Like I said, this just might not work for you. It might work for you. Uh, I'm going to post this um, recording on my YouTube channel. So you can go back to this and look at these tips again and see which ones you can try. Maybe it works for you. 
You can also see the links on the pages. I've got the links to show where I got the information from as well. The white table, uh, for the regulars, I want to get your opinion quickly. This is what I've had in the past, where I had your initial weight or your target weight, for example, to show what your weight is each week. As you can see here, um, I have actually should have included mine here. I've actually gone down a bit. Um, wrong, I thought mine in the wrong place there. But as you Linda came down, you can see there, Janet also came down, fantastic. This is a voluntary participation table. You don't have to put your name on here. But I'm thinking of changing it to a table that looks like this. It shows how many grams you've lost. So nobody will know what your actual weight is at the moment. It will just show you want to lose two kil kilograms, for example, in the month or three or four. You can tell me how many kilos you want to lose. And you can put on how many grams you've lost that week or how many kilograms you've gained if you were a bit naughty. So it's just to motivate you, something like this. Okay? You see, oh, I'm going down. Well, oops, this week I went up a bit. I must look what I eat next week. It just gives you more commitment. Totally voluntary if you want to join this. Uh, tell me which time you prefer. And what is that target column? Just go back to that column. Is to lose two kilograms in a month, for example. Oh, in the month. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right. With two or three or four. Remember, we said uh, we must rather yeah. lose more than a kilo in a week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why I put two for the time being there. Okay. So then, nobody, and I think this table will be less invasive in your privacy because people don't know what your actual weight is. They just know you're losing weight. No, my, everybody must know my weight. I have okay. to lose it all, Herman. <laughs> okay, you, you want otherwise, that pressure. You otherwise, want that pressure. I want that pressure. I'm, <laughs> I'm, embar I'm terribly embarrassed about my weight. So that's my accountability. I'm not hiding behind my weight anymore. Okay. I can both tables so you can decide to take on be honest more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fine with this new one. That's also fine. Okay. That's I can keep both. Not a problem. Okay. A summary, uh, well, if you lose weight, obviously check your overall daily kilos of intake. It does in several different ways tonight already as well. Choose food, this a boost your metabolism that we discussed in previous Zoom. Reduce your need for insulin by consuming low carb, this a food that contains fiber. And this, this is where your low um, glycemic load comes in as well. Um, because it also will lead to your body using a bit less insulin. Um, read the labels, obviously, make sure what's in there. If you can trust the label, do your homework. Because we don't always eat well, or because of our selection of food, try to go low GI or low GL, you might not get all the nutrients in, or you're fussy like me, you don't eat certain veggies, then use whole food supplements to supplement and ensure you do get all the nutrients in. See, this is also a problem. If you don't get a balanced diet in, your body's enzymes and hormones can't function normally. Um, and your body, for example, can't get rid of toxins in the body, and that can also lead to a disruption of your endocrine system, your hormonal system. And then obviously trick your mind so you will eat less. Try the things I've mentioned here tonight and see if it works for you. Herman? Yes. Can I just ask you? I see it says they check your overall daily kilojoule intake. Now, I'm not counting kilojoules, I'm counting calories. Is that the difference? Thing. Is there a difference? A, a, a cal calorie, uh, a, if you take your calories and multiply by 4 over 1, you get kilojoules. Oh, okay. So what is the oh, well, it sounds like what? I'm eating more. The kilo <laughs> kilojoule is the uh, uh, SI, where calories is the old system of, uh, which Americans also use. But it, oh. it, both, it actually measures the amount of Energy, in other words, both are for energy. So it's no, not a, there's no difference. No difference. No? It's just the value would be different. That's all. I mean, the same thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's like pounds and kilograms, right? That that's a good example. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. I see. In the, I see when I go and I look at something in the shop, the calorie content, but I see it says k calories. No, yeah, k calories. K calories. The kilocalories. Yes. That's very yeah. high. With kilo calories, that's very high. Yeah, but it's majority KCAL. I don't think anybody differentiates between kilojoules and calories as such on packaging. It's all KCAL. Okay. 
And and is that higher than calories then? Okay. A cake cow is a kilocalorie. One kilocalorie is a thousand calories. Hey? <laughs> Let me explain this way. Let me explain this way. Grams and kilograms. Grams and kilograms. A thousand grams make up a kilogram. Okay. Okay, so if you go in the kitchen and measure 20, 50 grams, that's roughly a cup of water, for example. Yeah. Well, that would be a quarter of a kilogram. The same thing okay. with calories. 500 calories will be a half a kilocalorie. Just like 500 grams would be a half a kilogram. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the question because now I'm all worried. <laughs> Just go just the low value is possible. That's the important one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, what I can do is um, I can try and use this pin here, uh, which says a one. You probably, probably can see that. I can't write very neatly this way, but you can see one kilogram there. One kilogram equals. A thousand grams. Okay. So same thing, a kilo calorie will be a thousand calories. I hope that helps a bit writing it like that for you. Now, if you stick to your diet, if you lose only three, four hundred grams in a week, that thing, in two weeks you start feeling it. And you feel confidence, hey, I've lost 800 grams perhaps in two weeks, or whatever the case might be. In four weeks, you might even start to see it somehow. And in eight weeks, you will also hear the people start saying, hey, you're looking different. What are you doing? It might be a bit yeah, longer. I'm, still waiting for people. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me I'm looking different. Uh, it will happen. It will happen. <laughs> Some people just not as, um, uh, what are you looking for? Or later, they say Afrikaans. Yeah, observant. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So, uh, but in any case, so just hang in there and you can get there. Just hang in there. Slowly but surely. And then the YouTube channel I mentioned, that's my YouTube channel. We can find the recordings of the other Zooms. So if you miss one, you can go on here and find them there. So if you want to change your health and so on, change your buying habits, what you buy, um, you can contact me. There's my email address as well. And like I said, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. On There are also other videos on health issues on there as well, not just weight loss. Just a disclaimer, the, the whole presentation tonight in all my Zooms uh, doesn't replace a doctor's prescription. It is from a primary healthcare uh, perspective as a nutritionist. And uh, people might... Um, the results may be different for different people as well. The experiences might be different. So you use what you want and see how it works for you. Okay, any other questions or suggestions or success stories? You're welcome to share if you want to. Okay, any more information, just contact me. Thank you, Herman. Okay, any questions from anybody? Hi, Herman. It's Lynn here. Hi, Lynn. Um, I think I mentioned that I recently, in fact, 20 days ago, I had a stent inserted. And I just wonder, and that you posted a video about high blood pressure. Yeah. Right? And that was, that was excellent because it gave one an understanding around how the sugar, how the high levels of sugar in your blood should how high levels of blood sugar increases or impacts on your blood pressure. So that was, this is more of a comment than a question. So I think that was excellent information. Thank you. And um, yeah, thank you for that. You see, that, that is one of the big problems we have is that uh, sugar causes inflammation in the bodies. And that inflammation can lead to many things like uh, that video talks about clogging arteries and the damage to the arteries and stuff like that. Um, and this all basically started uh, to 
escalated from the 1980s, when they started to say you must eat low-fat food and fat-free foods, because then people start to eat more carbohydrates, because they added uh, sugars to make the food tasty, because fat gives taste to food. Now, if you remove the fat, they add sugar to give it more taste. Um, and then, then they also started to become very scalable, sly as well, dis uh, disguising the sugar under different names. You might even say no sugar on the label, but one of the ingredients is caramel. As simple as that. So in the end, we, we keep on getting in sugar, which causes inflammation. And we started to stay away from fats. And many fats, like your, your fats, which you get um, your omega 3s, and which you find in many, uh, especially fish, and you find similar ones, uh, good oils also in like your avocado oil and your coconut oil, for example, um, your olive oil, and so on. So people start to stay away from many oils and fats. I mean, these oils and fats are actually good for us. Um, and that led to a lot of problems for a lot of people. And that also led to obesity and stuff and diabetes. It's almost impossible, really, to uh, use things like olive oil when you when you have to reduce calories to lose weight. Because that, I mean, the olive oil itself, just one teaspoon is 119 calories. Okay. But remember the, and the, the source of it. I, I, we spoke about this uh, in another Zoom uh, a week or two ago as well. Um, your, your calories you get from your oils and fats. It doesn't have exactly, there's a slight difference in how the body uh, metabolizes it and uses it. So it doesn't have exactly the same effect, exactly like sugar. Yes, in it is carbs or calories in it rather, but not carbs. So it, the body uses it differently. Um, I mean, if you go on banting, uh, my wife and I, we went to banting a few years back and we ate fat and fat and fat, but we lost weight. So because the body uses yeah. the fat different compared to carbs. Maybe I should try it and see because I'm specifically staying away from it because it's so high in calories. So it doesn't leave you much to eat, no? No, no. Uh, just remember, yeah. all of one don't heat it to high temperatures. Don't cook with it. Yeah. Because the moment you heat it to high temperatures, it forms bad fats. Yeah. Because that was my comment last week was... Um, I, I'm not getting the fats up the way it should be with with banting um, because I'm not having those high calorie like the as I said. But now maybe you you put a different spin on it. I'll try it and see if I still lose this week. If I don't, I'm coming to get you then. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Are you exercising, Janet? I am not as yet. My leg is still not better, and it's been okay. painful at the moment because I had another procedure on Friday. Um, so not, not too much. I walked once, twice last week. Okay. 1.4 Ks and 1.4, but it just makes my leg just really sore, you know? No, of course, yeah. Okay. 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 Oh. Any other comments or questions? Otherwise, I'm going to say bye. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, Herman. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, for your input too. Any Thank topic you want me to discuss next week, somebody? Any topic? Um, or must I choose one myself? You can choose one, I think. Okay. If I think of anything, I'll just WhatsApp the group. Yes, on the group, you can also let me know the WhatsApp group. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool beans. Okay, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Good evening, everybody. Bye -bye. Keep well. Okay. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.